Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the 2017 business session. It's good to have you here. Here's the agenda. I have a few remarks. Again, thank you for being here this morning. Thank you, uh, ACRO members. I, it's been an honor to, and I'm humbled to serve you as association president this year. I want to thank my wife, Cheryl, my family, Johnson County Community College, my staff, and their encouragement and support this, la this past year, as well as my fellow Kakarites, Kakro, Kansas. Are you out there? All right, a few of you out there. Go in the back. Thank you. As I look out in the audience, uh, this continues to be a beautiful picture. As you may recall, last year I re requested that the uh, cameras um, look out on the audience. So I'd ask that the cameras be focused on you. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> be nice. What a beautiful picture. As you may uh, also recall, um, this allows me to, if you will, allow me to take a moment to describe this digital masterpiece before you. Now, there may be a few changes from last year when you look out on the audience from last year. As you look out the audience, you may see some changes. Still beautiful, but like myself, you might have a little bit different shade of hair. Okay. I still am sticking with the concrete blonde. So. And like myself, a few of you may have less hair. But nonetheless, very beautiful. But if, you look, but if I can, if you look deeper, I, th I think you see many changes. Like myself, most of you, I'm guessing, have grown professionally, personally, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually. This past year, I'm sure that there's been other changes. If I looked at a different lens and look deeper, I can see many differences from the, the picture from last year. I'm sure that you've been changed, like myself, by the things you've read, the struggles you've encountered, the people you've laughed and cried with. You've hopefully been changed by the students you invested in and engaged with. Hopefully, you have been changed by the investment ACRO has made this year to help you in your jobs, to do them better, but also to assist you to grow professionally. After asking for a significant dues increase last year, I want to take a moment to point out some of the investments. It started last year with making our concerns known to the inclusion and equity, and those concerns carry throughout this year and will continue out the rest of this year and today. ACRO invested in resources in building a sustainable infrastructure of programming for the membership through different modalities, which continues to be a top priority today. The initiatives we have started to tackle and will continue to embark on come from our strategic plan and validated through an input from our association leadership at the DC leadership meeting. The strategic initiatives that I will mention come under three main areas of the strategic plan. Diversity and inclusion, supporting our state and regions, and finally, student success. Some of those initiatives have included this last year, the retooling of, the diver uh, a, of a diverse public policy group to serve the needs of the association expanding the infusion of the association's core competencies and proficiencies into the programming and the association culture. Through a pilot project with some of our state and regions, we are anticipating being able to offer a state and regional partners a web product they can use for their association's business and communication needs. We are anticipating shortly after the conference pushing out the complete guidance and pr best practices with the question of disciplinary notations on the transcript. By the way, thank you members of that task force for your hard work. Results and best practices soon to, soon to be published in the Lumina grant focus on the competencies-based learning and co-curricular transcript. 
We've also looked at uh, establishing a membership task force to develop guidance and best practices related to gender and identity. And finally, we're, there are, we've started some conversations about investing in our young professionals by the establishment of a leadership academy. These are but a few examples of the things that we've accomplished this year. Many more initiatives around the areas of communication, guidance, advocacy, government relations, membership programming uh, will be further unpacked shortly by our ACRO Executive Director, Mike Riley. And when I say we, I mean all of you and the other members who could not attend the conference this year. I could go on and on about the great work you have done among our co your colleagues at your state and regions. I need to leave time for the next president's remarks in charge, and I want to thank the current board of directors for their hard work and commitment to the association this past year. I want you all to know you have a great board of directors. We also have a great ACRO office staff who truly seek to serve you in a quality and professional manner, and I'm confident they will continue to do so. I look forward to seeing what the next board of directors and the ACRO office and you have in store for us in the coming year. Under the leadership of Jim Baus, the association is in good hands and will continue to be an association that truly impacts student success. Finally, on a personal note, if, you have a, if I've contributed anything positive to enhance the association this year as the president, I want to give thanks to my Lord Jesus Christ and give him the glory. Again, thank you, Board of Directors. Thank you, ACRO Office. Thank you, Association members in Minneapolis. And thank you to those who could not join us this year for your dedication to ACRO and most importantly, what you do to help students in meeting their educational goals and aspirations. Never forget how you truly do make a positive difference in students' success journey at your institutions. Keep up the great work. You truly make a beautiful picture. So keep smiling. Take time to smell the roses. And finally, remember to have fun. Thank you. My pleasure to ask the Executive Mike Riley to come up and uh, deliver his report. Good afternoon and thank you. I know you can all feel my pain of having to have had Paul Kyle as my supervisor this last year. It was such a difficult person to work with. <laughs> it really has been a pleasure, Paul. I, you're, your guidance and your leadership and your steady state has really been valuable to me, so I, I very much appreciate it. I want to talk about a few things. Like, like many of you on your campuses, you're thinking about your student information systems and your ERP and what are the next steps. We underwent the same conversations at ACRO, and after using a product called IMS for about six years, uh, we made a decision after uh, consulting with the board to move ahead with a new association management system. And interestingly, like some of the same conversations on campuses, we have chosen a product called Member Nation, which is actually a Salesforce-based platform. So it uses a Salesforce core database. It's a hub-and-spoke approach where we'll be able to choose applications to fill various functions. Uh, and interestingly as well, uh, two of our colleague associations, NACAC, and NASPA had also recently implemented uh, Salesforce-based platforms. So those same dynamics that are happening in our institutions are impacting association management. We expect that to go live sometime in September or early October. And you should see some uh, definite benefits from the member user perspective. Uh, we have been publishing college and university for, Martha, has it been 80 some years maybe? Long time. Uh, and when you get back to your offices, you will find, for the first time, the CNU in full color. Uh, I want to thank uh, Martha Hennebury, Heather Zamar, Jeff Von Monkwitz smith as our editor and helping to do this. It's a very beautiful publication. We think we'll be able to have far more charts in color in the future. Some authors are reluctant to have a complicated chart in six shades of gray. 
to try and illustrate their point. So this is a good chance to include those in those uh, articles that you all subsequently submit for CNU. Uh, we're also coming out with a flipbook version of this. We have a pilot for that right now. It's going to be very nice, uh, also in color, and the advantage of having many hyperlinks to the to the resources. So it's a it's a nice modern technology. And at some point, we'll be asking you to evaluate which format you want to have the CNU. We'll always continue to print it, but we do hope that some of you will choose to receive it electronically and allow us to reduce our carbon footprint a little bit by printing a few less and uh, not mailing as many. Uh, a couple other changes. As you know, we did a fairly major change in international education and our international education services area. After 20-some years, we stopped the service of providing individual international student credential evaluations and have instead shifted to focus that is driven by the strategic framework that the association has developed and from a very comprehensive report that was done by the International Task Force a couple of years ago. So that's what's driving our goals in international. And so you'll be seeing a lot more uh, activity in that arena. One is the EDGE database. Our, our EDGE database remains the premier uh, tool to understand educational systems around the world. And we're going to put a lot more energy in that. We've added a new position uh, to help keep that up to date. Uh, another hire in the office, many of you got a chance to meet William Gill yesterday during that optimistic discussion <laughs> on uh, public policy. Uh, but uh, William's going to be a great addition to us, and we do expect to, uh, as a result of him being on board, engage you a lot more in helping uh, to keep uh, education funded and uh, access and opportunity available for uh, the many people in the country. Uh, also in the international arena, we did publish a very large comprehensive international guide uh, to help you understand more the complexities of international enrollment. Uh, as, you, as you know, international students are becoming a critical component of our enrollments and uh, we've also, you heard yesterday from the surveys we have done, so the challenges that might lie ahead of us for enrolling international students, given some of the changes in the country. Hopefully that guidebook will give you some uh, firm foundation to reach your international student goals. And we'll be doing a lot more activities in the international education arena in terms of courses, training, webinars. Uh, so so that, that's our focus. And again, it's guided by our, our strategic framework. Um, Wendy Kilgore, our director of research. Wendy's back in the back there. You all know her from her many 60-second surveys and other activities. Uh, that continues to be well received by our membership. I think we have about a thousand people uh, subscribe to the, her monthly research blogs. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to do so. Uh, but we'll be collecting policies and practices from institutions to develop a repository where if you're needing to develop a new grading practice or a repeat policy or a returning student policy, you'll be able to read some examples from other institutions to consider as you develop your own practice. We'll also be developing an online self-assessment tool that will accompany the new, the recent uh, professional competencies and proficiencies. You saw these in your, your packets. These will now be the guiding direction for us as we develop professional development for the association. The competencies that are required for all members of our professions to be successful and proficiencies that are aligned to the registrar, admissions, and chief enrollment officer professions. Uh, th this is going to be a very important document. You will likely, through engagement with ACRO, may be asked to help develop content. Uh, we hope this continues to be a, an important part of your professional development. About June 1st, you'll be able to take an online self-assessment to see where you are in your skill set and development, and it will link you to resources that are available to help you move to the next level. Uh, as part of the AMS implementation, we will be developing a new website. I know you all love developing websites. It's a, they, uh, they look great when you finish them, and then they start to age very quickly. Uh, ours has been a bit of a challenge, but we have been slowly migrating from a transactional website where members basically only came to the ACRO webs website to register for a meeting or buy a book. Uh, now we want you to come and do a self-assessment, look at a resource page, look for resources, look at the daily uh, news blog that is there, 
uh, go to the consulting website and read their white papers, go to the international, ACRA International and learn about changing uh, educational systems, to, just to be more of a resource tool. So that will be rolling out shortly after our AMS uh, implementation. Uh, maybe the risk of repeating a few things that Paul said, I want to talk about a couple of uh, other things that we were involved in. Uh, we just recently completed the comprehensive student record project. I want to thank Tom Green, Michelle Sandlin from the staff who put a lot of work into it, but also uh, Nicole Spiro. Uh, Jeff was one of our consultants that was very much involved with that. Uh, Rafael Roland Munoz from our staff, our accounting staff, uh, working with 12 schools to develop these new models for how we might record student learning experiences on campuses. It's gotten a lot of attention and we expect uh, to get some additional support from funding agencies to bring that to a larger scale. So there may be some opportunities for more institutions to be involved. But it's been a great project and a great partnership with our colleagues at NASPA. I also want to recognize the work groups that have been conducting work, the, the, the Disciplinary Notations Task Force with leadership from Jackie, uh, excuse me, from uh, Laura Medley uh, and the chair from Christy Wold McCormick from the University of Colorado. That, draft is out. If you want to see and, and contribute to the conversation, they have a session tomorrow. I think that will be well attended, uh, we hope. And we also have a group working on, as Paul mentioned, student identity and that leadership from Jackie Carter and from our uh, Vice President for Business, Mr. Jack Miner, and it is chaired by Joseph Salomon. And what's the expectation of a deliverable? That's what I was trying to remember. End of November, we should see some guidance there. And that's be been given particular importance given the uh, president's recension of the Dear Colleague letter on transgender guidance. So the group is really committed to not being driven by a federal mandate. They're developing guidance that's the right thing to do for our institution. So we're uh, very pleased to, to have them working on that. So thank you very much. Uh, we are excited to work uh, the next, next year and if there's anything that we can do out of the ACRO office to help you or answer any of your questions, uh, I hope to hear from you. Thanks very much. All right. Heading into a more formal part of the uh, business meeting. Just a few uh, housekeeping. I want to introduce uh, Jeff von Monkowitz Smith, honorary member, retired associate vice president and university registrar, Boston University, and past ACRO president, who will be our parliamentary. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Minder, to get your voter cards out, that's how we'll ask you to vote. So get those out. I'll ask you to raise those when I ask for a vote. Um, I will try to determine the consensus as far as the vote is concerned. If there's any kind of discrepancy, we have nominations and elections committee members here to, to count if we need to. Uh, it's my pleasure to bring up um, Wayne Banks. He is a chair of the nomination and elections this last year to give his report. Wayne? President Kyle, the protocol has already been established. Good morning and greetings, ACRO members and guests. I will finish my report as quickly as possible, no matter how long it takes. <laughs> my name is Wayne Banks, and I'm the current chair of the Nominations and Elections Committee. The 2016-17 Nominations and Elections Committee met in Washington, D.C on September the 12th through the 14th at the St. Gregory Hotel. The committee worked diligently to develop a slate of officers, which included diversity in many areas, including gender, institutional size and type, and state. It has been a joy, privilege, and an honor to serve as chair of the 2016-17 Nominations Elections Committee. 
Members, with this committee, you elected an outstanding group with the majority of the members either are currently serving or have served in a senior leadership position within their state and or regional associations. And some brought experience from national organizations but each of us brought a strong sense of responsibility for the task of identifying the best people to leave ACRO. ACRO members, we thank you for this honor. When I view the map of the ACRO regions, I get a sense of the might and the strength of an organization devoted to help professionals implement best practices for every part of higher education community. I can stand before you and say, I am proud to be a member and part of ACRO. If you look at the slide, the states with the abbreviations underlined and italicized notes that these are active state associations. The group of men and women, along with their very able vice chair, Richard Morrell, was diligent stewards of the nomination and selection process. I would like to acknowledge the members of the 2016-17 Nominations and Elections Committee. Any &E members, please stand and face the audience as your name is called. Richard Morrell, Vice Chair, University of Nebraska, Lincoln. <laughs> Judy Carpenter, Chair elect, Washington State University. <laughs> please continue to stand, please. <laughs> Jonathan Hem, Vice Chair elect, Baylor University. Lisa Phipps, Purdue University. <laughs> Gina Crabtree, Wichita State University. <laughs> Rhonda Kitch, North Dakota State University. <laughs> Doug McKenna, American University. Brenda Selman, University of Missouri, Columbia. <laughs> and past president Dan Garcia, West Texas A&M University. <laughs> Members, this was your nominations and elections committee. Thank you, NNE &E committee, for your hard work. The next slide right here shows, as far as the nomination and selections committee, shows the, the state that they're from, and you can see we was rail represented. The leadership of ACRO, as demonstrated by the makeup of the board and by the nomination and selections committee, should reflect as closely as possible the diversity of the members of the association. It is the goal of each NNE &E committee to select candidates for leadership who have demonstrated the initiative and the experience to assume that the responsibilities required for these positions, as well as candidates who reflect the diverse nature of the association, including gender, race, institutional size, type and location, professional responsibilities, and any other area that may reflect the diversity of the membership. Each year, the Committee on Nominations and Elections will establish a slate of nominees for election as, mem as member directors and a second slate of nominees for election as members of the committee. The committee developed communications in order to encourage nominations that reflected the diversity within ACRO. The committee worked diligently 
and made every reasonable effort to reflect this important responsibility. The committee was charged with the slate for four open board of directors positions, which were President-elect, Vice President for Admissions and Enrollment Management, Vice President for Access and Equity, Vice President for Information Technology. The process. We, conduct, we, we conducted an outreach to nominees to encourage them to complete their profiles after voting was opened up, up to July 31st, as far as the nominees. If there were any nominees as far as their profiles was not complete, the NNE tried to contact each one of these individuals either by email, by phone. Uh, we tried to do everything we could as far as contacting these nominees as far as updating their profiles. In September, the Nominations and Elections Committee met and we viewed all these nominees for the slate of the four open positions, board positions, along with the 14 nominations and elections positions. Once this was done, voting was opened up October the 3rd to November the 4th. At this time, the membership voted and in early November, the ACRO office let everyone know as far as the results of this, of the election. As I stated before, as far as this was for, for the board positions, there were two, two openings for each one, two candidates for each one, and the membership voted on which one they wanted. We even had a space allocated for write-in candidates. This is a visual of the 2017-2018 Board of Directors. As you can see in blue, those are the states that all of these people are from. This, right, this, shows, this slide shows the 2017-2018 Nominations and Elections Committee as far as the states which they are from. Who voted? The, regional, the region that had the most votes was from Sacro. The state that had the most votes was California. And our international members, Albany, led the charge with that. This is very important. Who voted? This is the nominations and, this is the nominations and voting history. As I just got through going over, I stated the region and the states with the, high votes, with the highest votes. This voting by numbers, uh, if we look at that last on the right, the last column, we can see the information for 2016, 2017. 478 nominations was cast, down from 751 the previous year. 16 nominees completed their profile for open board of director positions. 43 nominees completed their profiles for nomination elections committee. This was down from the previous year. We hope that by including the time commitment documents for the board of directors and the nominations and elections committee on the nominations and voting website, more members will learn that service to ACRO is nothing to fear and will complete their profiles once nominated. Votes, 544 members voted. This was down from 818 the previous year. Out of the percentage as far as the number of members that voted, only 5% of the voting members voted. This was down from 8.2 percent the previous year. So as you can see, voting is down. Uh, this is something that maybe uh, Executive Director Mike Riley and the Board of Directors and the membership can get together and figure out 
to try to make this trend go upward. Members, here is the election results and the people you have selected to lead ACRO. Please stand when your name is called and face the audience. Board of Directors, President-elect Tina Faulkner, University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. <laughs> Vice President for Admissions and Enrollment Management, Tammy Agard, the University of Florida. Vice Chancellor for Access and Equity, Tracy Robinson. Tiffany Robinson, I'm sorry, I've, I had the name. Tiffany Robinson, West Kentucky University. Sorry, Tiffany. Vice Chancellor, Vice President for Information Technology, Mark McConaughey. India. Indiana State Bloomington. 2017-2018 Nomination Elections Committee. Chair, Judy Parperant, Washington State University. <laughs> Vice Chairman, Jonathan Hem, Bella University. Chair-elect Tracy Jamison, University System of Maryland. <laughs> Vice Chair-elect Rebecca Manner, Oregon State University. <laughs> Robert Hernersberg, Missouri State University. Linnell Hahn, Southeast Missouri State University. <laughs> Patricia McCain, University of Pittsburgh. <laughs> Lynn Archer. Okay. <laughs> Adventist. University of Health Science. I may not be pronouncing that right. The 2016-2017 Nomination Elections Committee alternates are Polly Griffin, P Princeton University. <laughs> Katie Humphreys, University of Nebraska, Las Vegas. Sally Page, University of Colorado, Bossier. I'm sorry. Andrew Hanna, University of Chicago. I'm sorry, I'm from Chicago. I can see the end of the light. <laughs> Last slide. Uh, timeline for next year. This is the timeline for soliciting nominations and elections process. Soliciting nominations for the general membership would be April through July 31st. Nominations elections meeting would be in mid-September. Voting would be September through October. Voting would end in October. Results from the ACRO office to the membership in November. Our next open board positions are President-elect, Vice President for International Education, Vice President for Leadership and Management Development, Vice President at Large, and the Nominations and Elections Committee. I encourage all of you to start thinking about who you would like to nominate to lead ACRO because nominations will be solicited very soon. 
if you feel like ACRA would benefit from your service, nominate yourself. This is the end of my report. Members, on behalf of the 2016-2017 Nominations and Elections Committee, I thank you for having a trust in us and giving us the opportunity to accomplish this important task for the association. Thank you, ACRO members. Don't go too far, Wayne. Thank, congratulations, uh, new officers. Thank you, 2016-17 Nomination Elections Committee. Appreciate it very much. <laughs> also, I want to formally uh, acknowledge our thanks to uh, Chair Banks uh, for chairing the Nomination Elections Committee. I'd also like to have uh, Vice Chair Rich Morrell come up to thank him. To approval of minutes. So as many of you know, in my role as Vice President for Finance, in addition, part of that role includes being the kind of recorder secretary for the board of directors. Um, one of the things that I bring to you today is our minutes from last year's business meeting. So that was on March 22nd, 2016. One more great opportunity to remind you that the materials are available on the ACRO website, so acro.org backslash business meeting. And with that, I would motion for approval of the minutes from 2016. Can I hear a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, ready, get your cards out. All those in favor? Any objections? Abstained? Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I'll move on to the um, finance report and a little bit about our budget for the next year. Um, some of you got to see this yesterday and came to the town hall. Um, I would encourage folks to do that. Again, this is your organization. In future years, it's a great opportunity to dig into the details a little bit more of the budget some of the other operations, the organization, and a great opportunity for you to get involved. The first thing I want to talk a little bit about is kind of some of the controls we have in place. So the board of directors has an audit committee that actually reviews the books each year. In addition to that, we hire an outside auditing firm to come in and work with us. And they gave us another clean audit. Um, we've had a number of years um, with clean audits, so that's a great thing for us. The other piece about that audit committee, though, is it includes a member from our general membership, so somebody outside of the board of directors. So that position this year um, was filled by um, Don Dykes of the United States Coast Guard Academy, but that position is open. Don's term ends at the end of this business meeting, and we'll be doing a call for members. So if this is an area that you're interested in, if you think that you may want to be vice president of finance someday, that's a great training ground, a great opportunity to serve the organization. So I encourage you to, to think about that when it comes out in a week or two. A little bit about our financial statements. So the 2016 audited number is the number that the audit committee and the audit firm actually brought back to us with the audit. So what, that's, um, what I'd like to do, though, is really think about our budget and think about our um, past couple of years' finances because it really does tell a great story and because there's a little bit of anomaly over the past couple of years. The biggest anomaly is the Lumina grant. So Mike made reference to that, but what he didn't necessarily emphasize is that was a $1.6 million influx of funds to the organization 
outside of our normal budget. So every year we come to you and ask for budget approval, but that was outside of the budget. So that was kind of a quirk. So one of the things about the audited numbers is it has that in it. That, what the great story of that is if you look at the 2015 numbers, you'll see that we had a huge net um, from operations at the end of the year. If you look at 2016, it looks like we didn't. In reality, that really is the Lumina grant. So we received all of the Lumina, grant, uh, all of the Lumina funds in fiscal year 2015, didn't actually spend most of them in two, until 2016. So kind of an interesting thing, um, just to kind of make sure that you realize that, because that will be important as we go to some of the other slides. The other piece that I think is a really good story to kind of be aware of is we have investments, which I'll talk about, but our investments, just like our own personal investments, are dependent on the economy. So if you look at 2015, much like many of us in this room, our investments didn't do that well. But in 2016, we rebounded, and so far in 2017, the economy, for our, for, at least for our purposes, are doing really well, and we've rebounded even more. So I think we'll see another good year in, in 17 as well. A little bit about those strategic investments. So ACRO board set out a few years ago to specifically have an endowment that's kind of our rainy day fund. So this is pretty typical among um, nonprofits. And our target number was 10 million. You can see that we're really close to that and we'll probably achieve that in the next few years. The idea behind that was we wanted a set of funds that we knew that we weren't dependent on um, the, the climate of um, annual meetings. If we ever had to cancel an annual meeting because of weather, other issues, if there was ever a membership issue, if there were any other business line issues, we really wanted to be able to know that we could weather that storm and be responsible. The other reason we have those funds is so we're able to make strategic investments. One of the things that the board did was specifically set aside a million of that towards infrastructure and a million towards strategic initiatives. If you think about some of the things that we've done over the past few years, some of those fit into that, yet we still haven't needed to dip into those. So we've actually been, been in really great shape. Mike talked about the, um, the management system for membership that we invested in, talked about the investments we made in the website, and frankly, some of the things that we did with the Lumina grant are things that could have been a strategic investment for us, but in reality, we were able to get grants funds for those to do those. So this will be something we continue to do. One of the things I wanted to point out specifically around this is one of the ways that we may use these funds is specifically around the purchase of either a building or a portion of, the, of a building, kind of like a condo. And we talked to you a little bit about that last year, specifically came forward last year with a motion to change our membership in order to get some tax exempt status within the city, within the city of DC. That motion didn't carry, but one of the things that I did as I, as I came on board was worked with Mike, worked with our accounting staff, worked with our auditors, and ran the numbers again, and it's still the right strategic move for us to continue to look to, to own property. So that's something that we've asked Mike to continue working on. I think that's something that you'll hear an update on in the next year to year and a half. We, have, we still have some time on our lease, so it's not something that, we're, uh, that we need to do immediately, but we want to do strategically, and we want to really move in that direction. So as we move towards the budget proposal, I really want to kind of call your attention again to the 2016 numbers and the 2017 numbers. So again, the 2016 numbers was what I showed you earlier as audited, but this slide only shows our operating funds. So this takes all of the Lumina funds out of the mixture. So this is a true representation of our business lines, our meetings, our dues, and our expenses on the normal operations for ACRO. So we would move forward with a really similar budget um, to what we've had in prior years. You can see that we've made kind of a, a profit, if you will, or a net um, gain over the last few years. We would continue to do that with the proposed budget in 2018. If you look over the years, you can see that our, our budget has gained steadily. And if you, again, if you take out some of the anomalies around the, um, the Lumina fund, 
we really would see a steady growth in both our expenses and in our revenue over the years. A couple of things that are different about the budget that I brought to you this year than you've seen in prior years. Um, one, we've done a little bit real, more realistic budgeting around some of our revenue lines. The one that's most specific is around consulting. Um, in some prior years, we had some pretty optimistic goals around being able to grow consulting. We've been able to do that, but from a conservative standpoint, um, what I've had us do is actually go in and look at what our prior year actual revenue was, base our budget on that with a little bit of growth. So we're still trying to be strategic. We're still trying to, to move towards more opportunities there, but we're trying to be realistic in what we do. And so the numbers for that are a little bit more realistic. We also have an elimination of both the revenue and the expenses related to the IES services. So again, last year we talked to you a little bit about how we were moving away from direct evaluation of transcripts for international students. That has been fully implemented now and that's no longer part of the budget. A little bit about the dues this year. Um, again, a reminder from last year, we brought a dues increase to you that passed of about $30. We had gone a number of years without dues increases. One of the things strategically we wanted to do this year is actually go back to the guidance that our bylaws outline. And our bylaws allow us each year to do an increase that lines up with the CPU, or I'm sorry, CPIU. And what that ends up doing is it's essentially a cost of living increase. We had done that for a number of years. We had moved away from it. We felt like going back to that as a model was more realistic from our membership, more realistic for us because it kind of lessened the burden of those larger increases and kind of put that in line. What that did this year was that it was, a, again, the economy was really strong last year. So it ended up being about a 2.1 percent increase, which equals out to $5 for dues increase. So with that, um, as a reminder, our budget will actually start, the one that we approved today will actually start on October 1st of this year, and we'll go through this process again next year where you'll have an audited version of the, the operating budget we're running now. This actually comes to you today as a motion and a second from the board of directors. So with that, I'll bring Paul back up. Thank you, Jack. Great job. Thank Give you. Hand. All right, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Thank you. Opposed? Abstain. Thank you very much. It's now my honor and pleasure to ask that uh, Minneapolis co-chairs of volunteers, Rhonda Kitch and Kelly Browning, come forward so we can recognize you and your hard work. I'd also like to, all the volunteers that might be in the audience for the Minneapolis to also stand so we can recognize you. I'd like to also ask the uh, program chair, Tim Amix, and vice chair, Sarah Harris, to come forward so we can recognize your hard work this year. I'd like to also recognize the members of the program 
committee, if they would stand and face the audience, and keep standing so we can see you all. <laughs> Sherry Walden, Lamar University. <laughs> Carrie Head, <laughs> University of Idaho. <laughs> Kelly Brundage, University of West Florida. <laughs> Christy Wald McCormick, University of Colorado. <laughs> Tina Denning, University of Alabama. Ari Kaufman, Berkeley College of Music. Ingrid Nuttall, University of Minnesota. Marianne Sticklin, Stickle, Dominique University of California. All right. Now it's my pleasure to announce the um, official attendance and Minneapolis annual meeting was 1900, right on the button. Now I'd like to present uh, the plaques to our outgoing board members, if they would come up, and uh, so we can express our appreciation for them. Dan Garcia, West Texas A&M University, 2014-2017. Dan. He's all right. <laughs> He's from Virginia Wall. <laughs> Luke Schulteis, Michigan State University, 2014, 2014-2017. Nicole Robick, Michigan State University, 2014-2017. It is my pleasure to pass on the gavel to President-elect Jim Baus. Jim, come on up. Use these gavels. <laughs> it's my pleasure to recognize Paul Kyle for her service as president of your association, ACRO. Thank you, Paul. Arrange all these papers, I could just go wing it. Okay, again, thank you, President Kyle, and thank you again for leading us this past year. Just to give you a heads up, I'm not 74 years old yet, so I'm going to keep it clean. <laughs> I will let you know that it was right leg first this morning. I know ACRO is an association that likes to get to the point, brevity is valued. Clarity is next to godliness. But I do want to say I'm, I'm honored to step into this position. I'm honored to serve you, to serve our association, to serve all the professions that ACRO embodies. And I, just, I do want to say that uh, during this last year, it's been really, I want to recognize the, amidst the often frenetic pace of our work and our lives, that we don't forget to slow down, to appreciate, to take the time we're often surrounded by a cacophony of input. Quiet seems to be in short supply. 
Take the time to think, consider, plan, and be intentional. This kind of reminds me of a special forces mantra I always appreciated, and this is kind of the Coast Guard Academy background, so I, I loved working with Don Dykes on the uh, audit committee. And that mantra is, you kind of have to think about this, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. So you have to take care of yourself, take care of your team, take care of other things, be intentional, think about things, because if you're the ambulance is in too much of a rush to get there and save somebody else and you crash on the way, you're of help to no one. So smooth is fast, or excuse me, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Moving forward at a sustainable pace with considered intentionality allows us to successfully achieve the goals placed before us. That last word I spelled us is critical to our success because it's about us. We're a member association, as Jack mentioned. Looking around this room, I'm really always, everyone connected to ACRO, everyone who's at this conference, again, I'm always in awe of just the sheer amount of experience, knowledge, innovation, creativity, and wisdom that's evidenced by the body of our association. We're here to share those things, to pass them on, and move all of our professions forward together. Sharing and building our professional knowledge prepares the next wave, the next generation. It is our succession plan writ large. It prepares others to step in, lean forward, and look for the next, even better way. It allows us to leave good enough for us behind, leave that at the door, and move forward to what's better for them, what's better for the future. For the mentors out there, thank you for encouraging others to be involved. I'm here speaking to you today because people like Herb Sherrick and Sue Eveland leaned forward and encouraged me to get involved. For those who may be hesitant or looking for a way to be involved, you know more than you think you know. Share it with your colleagues. We're a very forgiving lot. If you don't think you know something, go find out the answer later people will be forgiving, and you won't be revealed as a fraud on stage if somebody asks a question in your session. So remember, someone believed in you enough to hire you, enough to support you, enough to encourage you, enough to train you, enough to send you here. Look at the people that are giving presentations, that are leading committees, authoring articles, that are up on stage. You will be them. One day you will be them, sooner than you think. One day you will look up and you will be them. Continue to be involved, be engaged. Just made me think back to the first time I was ever asked to facilitate something, to be involved in a position, a, a, a panel, to write something. I know sometimes I may not seem like it, but I used to be the kid in second and third grade that if I had visitors come over to our house, I didn't know I was the first one bailing through the back window or running out the back door to go hang out in the backyard so I didn't have to be involved with or interact with anyone I didn't know already. <laughs> Paul and Mike spoke earlier about many of the initiatives that are underway and our overarching strategic initiatives. We'll continue moving forward and bring to fruition the initiatives that Paul outlined in his remarks. For me, often I've seen in higher ed the persistency and the consistent, or persistence and the consistency of purpose are often the hallmarks of progress in our higher ed world. We just have to keep going, keep going, and one day we'll wake up and we're there. While staying focused to bring our planned objectives to reality, we also need to remain nimble, responsive, flexible, and adaptable to adroitly deal with future potentialities and any as yet unforeseen challenges that may lie ahead. By bringing these objectives to reality, I also look at that as a way that we can truly honor the good works of those that have gone before us those who've laid the groundwork for continued success. All of us, working together, will build the future of ACRO upon this solid foundation. Together, we will persevere and advance our capabilities, our knowledge, and our professions. Again, keeping in mind it's all too easy for us to get caught up in the day-to-day, -day, our day-to-day -day issues and crises that we encounter in our professional and personal lives. But let us never forget the ultimate reason we work and serve in higher education is our students. Especially in times of uncertainty, we need to take care of each other, to take care of our people, because without them, we can't help our students achieve their potential, and through them, the potential of our shared future. No matter how distantly connected, we all have a stake in each other's success, and more importantly, the ultimate success of our students, our nations, and our world. Thank you very much.
It's now my distinct privilege to introduce you, your 2017-2018 ACRO Board of Directors. And again, always remember that we serve you. So we work for you. So that's why be engaged, vote for the Board of Directors, vote for NNE, because you're voting for those people that you want to serve you. First, I'd like to introduce Paul Kyle, ACRO Past President and Dean of Student Services and Success at Johnson County Community College. Tina Faulkner, ACRO President-Elect and Director, Office of Student Finance at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Jack Miner, ACRO Price President for Finance and University Registrar and Executive Director of Enrollment Services at the Ohio State University. <laughs> Tammy Go Gators Agard, <laughs> ACRO Vice President for Admissions and Enrollment Management and Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management at the University of Florida. Okay. <laughs> Jacqueline Elliott, ACRO Vice President for International Education and Chief Enrollment Specialist at Marion Military Institute. Tiffany Robinson, with a Y. ACRO Vice President for Access and Equity and University Register at Western Kentucky University, Go Hilltoppers. Laura Medley, ACRO Vice President for Records and Academic Services and Registrar at Colorado School of Mines. Meredith Braz, ACRO Vice President for Leadership and Management Development and Registrar of the College at Dartmouth College. Mark McConaughey, ACRO Vice President for Information Technology and Associate Vice Provost and Registrar at University of Indiana, Bloomington. Scott Dittman, ACRO Vice President at Large and University Registrar at Washington and Lee University. <laughs> I kind of I glanced over as there, saw Scott, and thought, okay, I'll hold off on introducing Jackie last. Jackie Carter, ACRO Vice President at Large and Registrar and Student Affairs Advisor at Washington, and Univers Washington University in St. Louis. Please join me in recognizing your 2017-2018 Board of Directors. to introduce the exciting part of the program. Your co-chairs of volunteers for the 2018 annual meeting in Orlando, the 104th ACRO annual meeting, Aigi Adoshogan, Adoshogan, University of Florida, Kathy Zimba, University of Florida, and Diana Hall from the University of Florida. Thanks for tuning in to WSUN Weather Channel. Kathy Zimba here coming to you from ACRO 2017 in Minneapolis to brighten your day with a weather report from Florida. Let's go to Iggy, who's reporting from Gainesville. Iggy, what's the temperature in Gainesville today? Oh, Kathy, it's feeling chilly this morning. It's only 60 degrees. <laughs> Let's check out Diana in Orlando, see how she's doing. Diana? Good morning, Iggy and Kathy. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Orlando. It's already 75 degrees. Perfect weather for having fun in the sun. And I'm really glad I got this Frisbee at Acro because it makes a super fan. <laughs> Kathy, what's the weather like today in Minneapolis? It's great. I believe we're gonna have an off-time high of 45 today. Wow, 2017 flew by. It's hard to believe we were just talking about the Orlando forecast for 2017. It's time now for us to go down and see for 2018 what our weather's gonna be like. Iggy? Oh, Kathy, it's feeling very chilly this morning. It's only 60 degrees. 
Let's check in with Diana in Orlando and see how she's doing. Diana? Good morning, Iggy and Kathy. It is a beautiful sunny day here in Orlando. It's already 75 degrees today. Perfect weather for having fun in the sun. Acro 2018 is here with a full slate of outstanding programming, lots of vendors, and many mentoring opportunities. Kathy, what's the weather like in Minnesota? It's great. I think we're going to have an all-time high today of 45. <laughs> OK, guys. Join us in Orlando 2018 for Acro. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Go Roll Gators. The video, please. Welcome to Orlando, Florida. Orlando's dining and entertainment districts enhance every visit to the destination. With a diverse selection of restaurants and entertainment options, the convention area on International Drive offers something for everyone. Sip crafted cocktails at the one-of-a-kind Rocks Lounge. Play to win at Dave & Buster's. Or melt the day away at B.B. King's Blues Club. Make an executive decision to satisfy many tastes, all within walking distance. In close proximity to International Drive and Universal Orlando Resort, Restaurant Row serves up some of the finest dishes Orlando has to offer at more than two dozen upscale and casual restaurants. Celebrate in style with Florida Fair at Big Fin Seafood Kitchen. Experience Roy Yamaguchi's unforgettable Polynesian fusion. Or swap stories over cigars and live jazz. New world sophistication meets old world charm in picturesque Winter Park, north of the attractions in downtown Orlando, where you can uncork a world of whites and reds at trendy wine bars and savor award-winning meals at gastropubs and chic bistros. Downtown Orlando boasts a vibrant entertainment district. Enjoy an impressive range of global flavors then head to the Amway Center for a basketball game or Blockbuster concert. Sip cocktails at a rooftop lounge, then dance at a high-energy nightclub. Or take in a Broadway show and laugh hysterically at a local improv group. World-renowned for its popular theme parks, the Disney Lake Buena Vista District offers exquisite fine dining, elegant eateries, and first-class entertainment. Experience contemporary American cuisine served with unparalleled charm and elegance at Victoria and Albert's, a five-diamond restaurant. Sample the celebrated menus of Cat Cora, Todd English, and Wolfgang Puck. And be dazzled by shows at the House of Blues, and La Nuba by Cirque du Soleil. The Universal CityWalk Dining and Entertainment District provides electrifying experiences for everyone. Savor the flavors of Emerald's Chop Chop. Enjoy upscale cuisine at Beach A and The Palm. Channel your inner rock star at the Hard Rock Hotel's Velvet Bar and Lobby Lounge. Get surreal with the Blue Man Group or chill out island style at Bob Marley, a tribute to freedom. Come visit to discover more about the area's award-winning dining and entertainment districts with daily direct flights from major U.S. cities. All right. Don't forget your chapstick and sunscreen. Thank you very much, Iggy, Kathy, and Diana. This concludes the 2017 Acro Business Meeting is now adjourned. Thank you.